This is part five of our negotiation book, Introduction, Distributive Tactics. The last chapter we talked about the distributive negotiation, win-lose, and in this chapter I'm going to just quickly introduce to you this idea of how do you execute it, what are the tactics. So remember, strategy is the big picture, tactics are the behaviors that you use to actually execute it or do it. So how are you going to do that? Let's quickly remind ourselves that a distributive bargaining situation is all about maximizing, about winning, right? Making the best you can out of the situation. This means that you're going to beat the other side and you're going to get more than what they get or they're going to give up more than what you give up or whatever combination of those things. A key way to do this, very key, is do not share your secret information. This is really super key. And this tactic is like fundamental. If you let the other side know what is your limit, what is your resistance point, they're going to just push you right to the resistance point. But you want to get far away from your resistance point. So you really need to keep your information secret. This means inside your team you need to all understand what information is secret and what information are you going to tell. And of course the information you tell does not have to be true information, but rather information to help you win the negotiation, to help you get more from the negotiation, to help you get your goal. So of course, uh, how can we do this? Well, let's look at a few ways we can do this for these tactics. One is you want to find out what is the other side's resistance point. So you want to keep your information secret, but you want to get the other side's secret information. And one of the keys are, what's the resistance point? What is their highest price or lowest price, depending if they're a buyer or a seller? And not just their prices, but also other things. But we often focus on the price. Number two, you want to influence the other side's guesses about your secret information. So maybe your resistance is 10. You cannot pay more than 10. You're a buyer. You cannot pay more than 10. But if it's over 10, it's too much. But you don't want to tell the other side it's 10. You want to tell them it's maybe something like 5. Because 5 is so far from 10. So you influence them to think it's five. You don't even, you could tell them it says five, but they won't believe you. Maybe you react somehow using your body language or using some people on your team to send them information and they think your resistance is five. So they'll get up to five and then stop because they're worried if they go over five, you're going to walk away from the negotiation. So this is called influencing the other side's guesses. You can also influence the other side's outcome valuations. So this means basically this idea of two ideas that we've, we've asked before, that we've asked ourselves. These, these are the ideas of what is the uh, value, what is the importance of this negotiation now, and what is the importance of the relationship in the future over time. So that other team, the, the, your, your counterparts, they're trying to think of their strategy and they're thinking about how important is this and also about the relationship and you can influence that you can make them feel that this is more important or less important or you can make them think something about the relationship in the future it may be true it may not be true right so you can say something for example uh, we're going to have a strong relationship in the future so give me a break now now in the future do you give them that good relationship well maybe not of course if you don't they won't trust you in the future but that's another case right so that's influencing the other side's outcome valuations how much do, how important do they think the outcome is and then how important is the relationship you change their feelings about that and then the last thing we can do the last tactic is influence the cost of delaying or leaving the negotiation and of course in our game this is really important because we have multiple days to execute our RPG negotiation. But some groups will act quickly while other groups will take four or five days. What's the risk of taking longer? If you're a buyer there may be no more sellers. They may have sold all their inventory uh, and vice versa. The other way is true also that if you're too fast you may, you may sell a product 
and then you sell it at a low price while another seller waited until the last day and they were able to sell it for a higher price because there were no, no other suppliers. So you can influence this idea on the other side, the team you're negotiating with, your counterparts, by making them think. Um, if I wait longer, what will happen? Or if I delay my decision, what will happen? Or if I give up negotiating, what will happen? So you influence them to think that this is more important than it is, or to make them think that uh, delaying is not good, they should buy right away. You, for example, we often hear this, um, limited time offer, right? This is a one-time offer, we cannot make this offer again, meaning you better do it now, so we're trying to influence this thinking. Uh, now is the last chance, this is the last chance to get this special price. That's this idea of influencing this idea of the delay. So these are the kinds of tactics you can use in a distributive situation. And remember again, the emphasis is get to your goal. Get to your goal. Don't give up something. Get as much as you can to get your goal. And this way you can win more. And if you give up too much, the other side's going to be winning at your expense.